Remember, this entire manga and every manga on this channel is hand-drawn by myself. And now you too can learn exactly how to make your own viral Dragon Ball mangas at www.makemanga.com where you can learn directly from me. My mangas have got me on TV, on newspapers and even earned me over $60,000 a month on Patreon alone. And now you can click the link in the description and pinned comment of this video and do it yourself. You only need to see the website to see just how many thousands of you are taking this opportunity right now. And don't forget also, the next video to this Ultra Vegito series has already been made and is live now on my Patreon right now for over 4,500 of you incredible fans to watch after this. Again, links are in the pinned comment and description. Enjoy. <coughs> Lucif, what are you? So our story continues with a shell-shocked Goku, who has totally lost his cool after having just had the memories of a demon emperor transferred into him, and along with it, the revelation of just what Lucif's ultimate plan was, and just why he has so forcefully decided for the complete eradication of every mortal, of every planet that resides in the 12 universes. The answer, leaving our hero Goku, nothing short of terrified to the core, as his body begins to sweat profusely. And as his face would begin to drip down, still with his eyes wide open, Goku would mutter, this this is so horrible! I can't believe this is what this was all about! What is he doing to them? Why? And as if the sight of what he was seeing was so abhorrent, it would begin to attack him physically and not just mentally. Starting to tremble, he would continue. This was Lucif's plan all along! I knew this wasn't for nothing, but this? I can't believe it! He really is evil! <clears throat> and before long, either by choice or force, the Saiyan would then suddenly return back to base, falling backwards, still just muttering the forbidden name of the new Omni King. Lucif. Before long, looking a little more like himself, Goku would just sit comfortably on the ground, with his legs crossed right next to the fallen demon emperor Kaida, who now lays lifeless, as Goku, looking on at his victim, would comment, Kaida, you have my respect for sticking to your word. But this plan, if it goes ahead, I have a feeling it'll be something that will affect far more than even the multiverse. Like it could end everything. Until eventually, now starting to panic, thinking about how much apparently seems to be at stake from this still mysterious vision Goku had seen, breathing deeply and quickly would think, I need to tell the others about this as soon as I can. This is so, so much worse than any of us could have thought. I don't even know who could make sense of it all now that all the gods are dead. Vegito, what would you do? <laughs> but before long, attempting to make his next move, Goku would then place two fingers on his forehead, saying, Maybe, maybe he'd know. And just like that, he would then vanish from planet Vampa, leaving it safe finally in the name of Broly. For its last two inhabitants, Chilai and Limo. <laughs> Meanwhile though, back with Piccolo on planet Namek, 
he would finally be back in his original clothing and base form, having stopped waiting to be picked up in futility. Instead now, just watching over the destroyed remains of the Namekian villages, while the last surviving Namekians would rebuild what they could. But, within the silent solace of his impenetrable mind, the warrior would still have some intrusive thoughts, as he would think, Seems things are finally going back to normal for these guys. My people, they are a resilient bunch. Even with all the death, all the horrors they've seen, they can come together to make the most of such a bad situation. I just wish I had come sooner. If only I did, I could have saved so many lives and prevented so much destruction to their land. My land. Young man, you need to learn to think more positively. But as Piccolo would admonish himself, to the rescue, the wrinkled and frail hand of Kami, the Earth's former guardian, would grab onto his shoulder mentally and say, for someone less than half my age, you truly do speak like a bitter old man. For someone like you, who has saved the lives of countless people, Namekians or otherwise, you truly are too hard on yourself. It is not always about coming at any specific time, but coming at the right time. And you came and saved this entire planet, allowing them to rebuild. To me, that sounds like the best time. And I'm sure Oboe, who you saved also, would agree too. <laughs> and with these words from the father-like figure of Kami, Piccolo would just close his eyes with a smile and say, You're the last person I'd expected to butt in so randomly after all this time, old friend. But it's good to know, even in the worst of times, you still manage to have some sage advice. <laughs> but just as this wholesome moment would go down, suddenly an energy would arrive on planet Namek that would catch Piccolo by surprise. After the defeat of the Demon King by Piccolo's hands, could an emperor have arrived in his place? But as Piccolo would turn his head, his face would seem calm and familiarized as he would call out, So, you finally came. Don't you think you could have taken a little longer? And of course, the arriving figure would be Goku himself, who would quickly, to the surprise of the Namekian, say, Sorry about that, Piccolo, but I'll explain later. Right now, we need to talk. <clears throat> but hearing this sudden request to speak, Piccolo wouldn't help but smile at the audacity. Letting out, You've got some nerve, you know. Leaving me here all alone with no way to get back. And the first thing you need when your back is my help. Typical. Go on then. What do you need to know? To which Goku, maintaining his serious stance, would just reply, Not so much what I need to know, but what I need to tell you. But not just you. I need to speak to... Kami! <gasps> Kami! What? Me? 
as instant the mentioning of needing to talk to the previous guardian of earth of all people after all these years would take both piccolo and kami by surprise and so after some time eager to move away slightly to gain some privacy goku and piccolo would be seen in the air away from the village standing face to face for the first time in a long while, harking back to the days of Dragon Ball. As Piccolo would begin curiously... So, you've managed to find out what this is all about, haven't you? I won't ask how for now. You can spare me the details. But just tell me what this Lucif is planning. How bad does it get? And to that end, Goku would finally begin to explain what he had learned as he would begin. It's bad. Real bad. Lucif wasn't trying to kill us all just for the sake of it. There wasn't a plan of dominating the universe like the typical bad guys we've faced before. It turns out, when a planet is actually conquered, when its people are actually all killed by those monsters. The Tower of Sorts is summoned by the demons left on the planet. A tower that steals the souls of those who died, trapping them, not allowing them to ever go to the other world. Somehow, Lucif is able to convert them into energy, energy he wants to use to eventually merge the demon realm with ours, creating an all new plane, one that he'd be the sole ruler of, something he calls the Omni Devil. What? Merging the realms? And immediately, the elderly wise Namekian would be thrown back by what he would hear muttering out with wide open eyes. Joining the demon and mortal realms, that's impossible. That would bring about the end of everything. Goku, are you sure about this? And in response, nervously, the Saiyan would just nod his head and reply, I am Kami. It's just as I saw. It was horrible. What do you think? What happens when the realms merge? Just more demons for us all to fight? No, Goku! But quick to shut down any thoughts of this situation being not as bad as it truly is, Kami would continue. This will bring far more darkness and damage than you could ever imagine. In all my years as a guardian, I have never thought of such a thing being possible. But in short, Goku, if the realms are merged, it will mean our mortal realm, as we know it, will no longer exist. And that will mean that all those that died here on Namek, Earth, and all over the multiverse would never be able to return as there would no longer be a realm from which they originally came. Not even the Super Dragon Balls would be able to undo this. All those lost would be lost forever! Huh? No way! Leaving Goku instantly stunned with a mixture of shock and fear, as such an outcome and consequence would never have even crossed the Saiyan's mind. <laughs> Damn it, Lucif! But these emotions would soon shift towards rage. Rage at the evil of such a plan, with Goku grumbling, So many have died already! We can't let him get away with this! Everyone, every single person 
needs to be brought back, Kami! We have to stop him now! But the former guardian of Earth, looking on, would have more to say. Letting out... Though I encourage your urgency, Goku, as it is unclear how many planets full of souls he will even need, and how close he is to his goal even now, I must tell you that losing access to those souls and lives may not even be the worst of our consequences. An Omni King and Demon Realm Ruler's power, the ruler of any realm's power, is only derived from the strength and size of the realm they rule over. And I suspect Lucif's true goal from all of this is for his already immeasurable power to reach another all new level. One, at least 1,000 times stronger than before. Height strong enough that he could take on and defy even the higher gods. That is what I think Lucif's true goal is all about, Goku. And if he succeeds in that, all life, all good, will be gone forever. Only evil will remain. Ah! One thousand times stronger! Paralyzing Goku once more in sheer shock. As having seen the power of Lucif firsthand already, and even been a part of Vegito. While he used it, he would yell, That can't be possible! Just how strong can someone get? <laughs> But controlling his emotions soon enough, Goku would then quickly calm himself down, as he would swiftly look to Piccolo and say, It's just one thing after another with this guy. All I know is that we have to stop him, and we will. Piccolo, you, me, Vegeta, Gohan, all of us need to get a move. We'll save as many planets as we can. I'll use multiform if I have to. I'll find a way for us to travel between universes. I'll make sure his plan doesn't go ahead. Hmm. <clears throat> Calm down, Goku. But Piccolo with his arms folded, despite everything he had heard, would remain moderately cool-faced. As he would say, I don't know how strong this Lucif guy is, but judging by your reaction, he isn't someone to underestimate. But neither are we. You're right. We can't let him get any stronger. We made that mistake with Frieza, Cell, and even Boo. This time, we fight him as he is, but you're not alone anymore. With the power of all of us, with the power of all of Namek running through me, I'll make sure his plans fail too. Huh? Power of all Namek? This phrasing from Piccolo, understandably, leaving Goku confused briefly for a moment before a confident smirk would appear over the Namekian's face, as he would say finally, It's just as you heard. Watch and see, Goku! As instantly exploding in power, showcasing his all-new form, Orange Piccolo would bulge up for Goku to see, his body several times larger, his power level at an all-time high, as his weighted hat would instantly blow off into the wind. The orange Namekian would yell, 
Don't forget, we mortals won't be going down that easily, Goku! <laughs> Piccolo, when did you... Leaving Goku totally taken aback as he angles his head upwards, staring at the now incredibly tall Piccolo, in awe of his new power, questioning... That energy! It's incredible! If you were this strong when the gods arrived on Earth, why didn't you just stop them? <laughs> but Piccolo, smirking at the naive Saiyan looking down, would just reply... Obviously, I didn't have it then, my friend. This is a new addition. Made up by fusing with the strongest of my kind. I haven't quite mastered it just yet. But when I do, this Lucif better watch out. Omni King or not. <laughs> wow. I haven't seen you talk like that in a long time, Piccolo. And in typical fashion, this new power up from his Namekian rival would be all that would be needed to change the Saiyan's mood. As stepping back with a smile, Goku would say, So, it's another fusion. Man, you really get a whole lot stronger every time you do that. I guess, when you do it with thousands of Namekians instead of just one, the effects a way bigger too. You're almost as strong as Kaida, the demon emperor I just got rid of. <laughs> but such a statement would only bring questions to Piccolo's mind, as he would then query, Kaida, an emperor you defeated. So what you're saying is, you're even stronger than me! Normally, I wouldn't be so surprised. After all, it is you. But this new form of mine, you do sense. It's way beyond even your ultra instinct now. Don't you? <laughs> but hearing this from Piccolo, only a smile would return to Goku's face, as he would close his eyes and ominously let out, Oh yeah? I'm sure it is, Piccolo. But what you need to know about Ultra Instinct is that it's old news now. <laughs> as Goku, suddenly now coated in energy, would take the giant Piccolo by surprise. Before in a flash, not only would Goku's hair transition to white and spike up, but across his forehead, a cyan triangle would begin to fall, and far more seamlessly and quickly than it did when Yamoshi attempted the same. And so too, from his muscular defined back, two beginnings of white wings would start to extend and sprout forth until... <laughs> Finally, for the first time since the battle with Lucif, Goku's Stage 2 Seraphim form would be shown once more in all its glory, perfected and mastered by now to be activated at will. His entire body coated in a circulating white electricity as his dual wings extend on both sides angelically. <coughs> and as Goku's near limitless divine energy would pour out, his power would seem like an endless tsunami splashing in all directions. G Goku! Stunning the orange Namekian to no end his eyes simply cannot comprehend the progress Son Goku had made during his journey in the Ultra Vegito story. 
with the gap between their powers finally understood in the most forcible of ways. As he would mutter, This is impossible! This isn't the Goku I know anymore! Just what happened while he was away? And it wouldn't take long for the Namekian, who was in such close proximity, to be pushed back from its sheer force of power. His body, even in his transformed state, unable to sustain itself from the brilliance of Seraphim Goku's almighty energy. GOKU! Just shouting his former rival's name in disbelief as the Seraphim Cyan energy begins to shoot upwards now, piercing the skies and heavens themselves as the entire planet of Namek quakes in Goku's presence. Uh, when, when will it stop? Uh, and still watching on as Goku's power just continues to grow and grow, the once confident Piccolo would lose his voice, wondering if there truly was even a limit for power like this. How possibly anybody could stand a chance against Goku, the least of which this mysterious Lucy. But with such an extravagant transformation taking place on the usually quiet Namek, the last remaining villagers would stop what they were doing, taking notice as they stare into the sky in awe. With Elder Mori himself beginning to recognize the Saiyan at the center of it all, whispering, It cannot be! He... He has returned! The savior of Namek! Uh, you... You weren't lying! As with the transformation now finally complete, and his Saiyan friend now finally in full view, the Namekian's face would continue to be frozen in shock. <laughs> All the while, Seraphim Goku humored by the reaction, would just say, Of course I wouldn't, Piccolo, since when did you know me to be a liar? Don't give me too much credit for this, though. You have no idea just how long I've been training for this. We missed out a few details back on the lookout. Before Goku would then swiftly place his hand on Piccolo's shoulder, Continuing, uh, but that's enough showing off. We've both come a long way, and now uh, it's time to head back home. <laughs> As both warriors would then instantly reverse back to their base forms, with the now calm Piccolo just muttering, Right, you say it. Just can't help yourself with the new forms, can you? While Goku would respond, uh, <laughs> Just you wait and see what Vegeta can do. Ready? And with that said, Goku would then raise his two fingers towards his forehead, about to instant transmission away. WAIT! Piccolo! That is, until from below, a relatively short-statured green man would be seen running towards them, calling out. And eventually, once he would get closer in the air, it would be revealed to be Elder Mori, keen to see them off before they would be gone for another several years, saying, Thank you again, my brother. I hope to see you again one day. And you too, Goku. I hope Dende has served you well. The people of Namek will always be indebted to both of you. To which Piccolo would just turn and reply, I'll be back soon, Elder Mori. You can count on it. Now that Obo's here with Nail, 
They'll both make sure of it. While Goku mid-transmission with a smile would just say, Don't worry about it. I'll be sure to tell Dende you said hi. See ya! And just like that, the two would vanish from the lush green planet. But as Goku and Piccolo would vanish, two others would be arriving at a certain position on a certain planet belonging to the Yard Rats. <laughs> These two revealed to be the Prince Vegeta in his ultra ego form and Demon Emperor Taiza, both continuing their battle with ferocity, but with one side far more damaged than the other. <laughs> but nonetheless, with equal speed, both would collide their fists at the same time with ferocity, though only Vegeta would be baring his teeth, while Taiza would look on emotionlessly. The impact itself creating a gigantic explosion regardless that shakes the very core of Yard Rat and its last few surviving creatures, leaving behind an enormous crater in its wake. <laughs> that only moments later, the Demon Emperor Taiza would be seen jumping backwards from, while Vegeta would be nowhere to be seen. <coughs> but within the death, is where we would then see the prince. His body even more damaged now than before, as half of his clothing would become ripped in the impact, holding on to his bloody arm as he would grumble. You're definitely strong. The demon realm is somewhere I wish I could have trained, because this pain, this pain, is delicious! <laughs> As raising his head with a full on maniacal grin, despite all his damage, in his ultra ego state, Vegeta would welcome the challenge. <laughs> Instantly continuing on, rushing straight at the surprise Tizer. But just as Vegeta would swing his leg for impact on the Emperor, out of nowhere, Taiza would be completely obscured for what looks like a giant demon palm, made of pure demonic energy. <laughs> and from within a dark shade, the Emperor would be seen unmoved, with his blood red eyes just piercing through and not a word coming out from him before... In a flash, the gigantic demon hand would clench right on top of the Saiyan like a makeshift bear trap. Immediately creating some kind of explosion within its palm that makes direct contact with the prince sending the Ultra Ego Vegeta flying backwards with even more damage, coughing out globules of blood as he does so. <laughs> Eventually leaving the destruction-filled warrior to slam on his back against a rocky surface. And with his body literally dripping in blood, one eye closed and a grimace, he would grumble. It's that thing inside of him again! He can fight and defend him at will! We'll have to be careful of that next! <laughs> but just as Vegeta would begin to become cautious over this strange secondary power of Tizar, he would be met with a hard foot smashing on his face instead. And as Vegeta's skull would crush deeper into the rocky surface, Tizer, pushing him in, would comment, 
Tilly Morton. I told you for making me bleed. I would return it tenfold. You still have many hours of this pain left. Prepare yourself. <laughs> Gladly. But like a cockroach that could survive a nuclear blast, Vegeta would just pop back up, still smiling, grabbing onto the Emperor's leg as he pushes back. <laughs> Annoying Tizer as he would stare at the brazen smile and comment, I've had enough. Enough of your naivety. This isn't a game. This is your... <laughs> as suddenly, Swiping his right arm behind, unleashing a stream of energy, the Demon Palm would make its appearance once again, with huge velocity before... YOUR GRAVE! With a violent crash, it would slam straight onto the body of Vegeta, creating a wave of destruction all around. And now topless, his mangled body strewn across the ground in a literal imprint of a demon hand. The squashed and broken torso of Vegeta would remain breathing harshly in pain. All the while Tizer just stands calmly in front, looking down at his fallen opponent. <coughs> I'll get you for that! But defiant, Vegeta even while coughing blood up when not able to see would still insist that his comeback was on its way. <laughs> but Tizer, who knows nothing of Ultra Ego nor what other form Vegeta has in his pocket would only see a crazed man who seemingly doesn't know when to give up, as he would just turn his back then and say, You've been saying that for the last hour. I will applaud you for making me bleed, but that is as far as you could ever go. I'll leave you to die with the rest of this pathetic planet. The souls here are not even worth harvesting. Come, father! With that said, the Demon Emperor, who deems Vegeta not even worth finishing off, would then fly off into the sky, calling for his father to follow him. <laughs> but it would only be within a few meters that he would realize something is off. <laughs> Why you? As from behind, a powerful sharp beam of energy would just narrowly miss him, and as his eyes would dart behind, it would only come from one certain member of royalty. <laughs> if you wanted to step it up a gear so bad, you only had to ask, kid. As standing there, of course, with his fingers still smoking, Vegeta, with a beaming grin, would be back again to stop Tizer from leaving, saying to him, All right, all right. I must admit, I was enjoying myself a little too much. You just don't get how good your puny attacks feel while I'm in this form. I only wanted to kill some time until Kakarot was back. But since you're impatient, I'll end things now. Before with his smile continuing, he would then turn his head and call out, Father, time's up. No more playing around, so hurry up and... What? But as Vegeta's eyes would finally begin to process 
what he would be seeing in the direction of his father, what he would see, would soon become one of his worst nightmares. As when we would return to the king's battle, it would surprisingly be reaching its conclusion. As in an eerily familiar scene, King Vegeta would be on the receiving end of a deadly uppercut. <laughs> Sending his body back flying before... <coughs> landing viciously on his backside. His body lifeless, his eyes blank, his form instantly reverted back to base. FATHER! and reacting instantly to seeing his late father seemingly die before his eyes, Vegeta internally would not be able to help triggering memories of how he was told his own father was killed by a certain emperor of the universe in practically the same exact way. <laughs> no! I won't let this happen again! And with the triggering, a rage like none other would come over the prince. His own eyes disappearing too, as his teeth bare sharpened. All the while behind him, all he could see now is the smug smile of the late Freezer. And in the end, the result would be a catastrophic power up. One fueled only by his Saiyan side for once. As while Vegeta's entire body would bulk up, covered in veins all over, behind him. Curiously, the roar of an Uzaru would be heard all across the universe. <laughs> What is this sight leaving Taiza in the same pose Vegeta was in last chapter, when he had first seen the mysterious monster within the Emperor, as the demon would then cautiously question, this flesh pile, does he too possess a legendary beast within him? Oh! No, no, not another one! As curiously, the Demon King, also spotting the similarity, would sport the same look of fear. While King Vegeta, whose mortality at this point would seem unclear, would remain motionless. Until... <laughs> in the most bizarre twist, would suddenly let out a smirk. Just what is going on? And what new power is Vegeta about to showcase? But that was it for today's video, guys. And if you made it this far, leave me a hashtag Uzaru in the comments down below and let me know just what power Vegeta will possess now. Or just head over to my Patreon right now where you can see the full next video fully voice acted, soundtracked and edited for you to enjoy with over 4,500 plus other fans as well as getting access to 250 plus other fan mongers too. It's the deal of the century.